and welcome to episode 50 of Into the Podcast. I'm your host, Sam, and I'm joined every single week by the Scarved Magician, Ryan Chitterden. Say hello, Scarved Magician, Ryan Chitterden. Hello, Sam. Are you okay, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks to you. Yeah, you're just cleaning your glasses very eloquently. Ele- eloquently. Oh, Ele- eloquently. Oh, I'm so poorly. <laughs> Were well, you going to say eloquently that's the, that's or the, elegantly? Both. Are they the same word? No, they're not. Um, <sighs> elegantly. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's good. <sighs> that bad. It's that, that bad. bad, mate. Yeah. So let's start. I just want to apologise to everyone. So me and Ryan had the best weekend planned. I was so looking forward to it. We was going to get together on Friday night and we was going to record um, before this episode and next week's episode we was going to record our one year anniversary episode which yep. is technically the christmas episode as well mm-hmm. we was going to do that on the friday night get absolutely mortaled it was going to be so much fun and then on the saturday we was going to wake up hungover do tonight's episode today's episode do next week's episode and then we was going to have christmas jumper day with your family yeah we were but that didn't happen did it ryan well it kind of happened for me yeah well bar the mm-hmm. recording bar the recording Bef- Hence before, the late episode. Yeah, before I get into um, my poorliness and what's gone on, uh, how was Christmas Jumper Day? It was good fun. Yeah? It was good fun. Yeah, it's just an annual tradition that my family do. Um, so, ooh, I don't know how long it's been going now. A good long time. So it's just with like family and, and, and friends and old friends, and we just meet up around Christmas time. I see it's uh, tricky to fit everyone in and then whoever makes it just make it and we go around the local whoever's local village take it in turns and just get pissed yeah it's just a nice way of catching up i was so sad because i got a late invite to that you sort of mentioned it and said oh i'll uh i'll see if we can get you added to the table yeah which obviously excited me i've not seen your family in a while and i mean like, your family are like distant i've got a very small family i don't have distant relatives yeah so your family to me are them distant relatives so i was really <laughs> really looking forward to it and bless her your mum put on when i wrote that the episode was gonna be late due to me being poorly she wrote on there oh we really missed you on the day and we one, did one lonely tear sort of went down my face when yeah. i read that like, oh it's just it's, so sad it was sad because it had the potential to be a great a great weekend yeah it really did so um i'm sorry i'm chitted and mm. i'm sorry i wasn't there i miss you i want to see you soon please but instead, what I did... <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, let, let me tell you the story about my illness, because this is always good fun. It starts with a little bit of toothache. <laughs> <laughs> Due to this podcast and me fucking ramming stupid protein balls in my face, I chipped a tooth, as a lot of you might remember, and I've joked about only having three teeth since. Yeah. Well, that one tooth, that Sam kept going, I'll get sorted. You don't, because it's not been hurting me. It's not been bothering me. It's just a chipped tooth. I'll sort it eventually. I don't like the dentist at all. Lots of people don't hate it. I'm terrified. I don't know why I'm terrified of it. Now I'm not. This has helped me not be scared of the dentist, actually. So um, didn't sort it, whatever. Anyway, woke up to start a new job on Monday. I finally started that new job I've been talking about. Yeah. I'm very looking forward to it. Woke up very Monday exciting. morning. Bit of a niggly tooth. I was like, Ooh. oh, you fucker. And I could tell I chipped it even more on Saturday night, which was my old job's Christmas party. Right. I don't remember much about it, but all I can tell you was, apparently in the morning meeting, it was mentioned just what an absolute wild cat I was. Oh, you crazy cat. But apparently not offensive, just around everyone dancing. That's rare. Yeah, full of energy. What's going on? Yeah, not offensive, just full of energy, just trying to get everyone to dance, just, you know, head of the ball, which is fantastic. So yeah, so I was that fucking hell Monday. that would be fine, you know, new job. It's took my mind off it. Tuesday, big important meeting out in um, Coventry. Mm. So I drove out to Coventry on the Monday night, stopped in a proper swanky Hilton hotel. Nice. Turn up, mate, and they're like, oh yes, you know, you've just put your number in, the, your registration number in there, we'll sort your car out, and breakfast is at this time, and oh, please take a warm cookie. They just passed me this warm cookie that is just melting in chocolate. Unbelievable. Unreal. Yeah. So I go up to my room in this swanky hotel with my two pot noodles I was having for tea because <laughs> I might fuck paying Hilton prices for food <laughs> and my four pack of IPA I took in there with me. Amazing. And uh, I was like, oh God, it's fucking, it's wrecking me a bit now. Wake up Tuesday for this meeting, just me and a lot of very important people, all with mm. doctors in their title, you know. Yeah. And my face is throbbing. Oh, like, is there's just... nothing worse than toothache, no. is there? It's the absolute... Oh, oh my God. God. It, you cannot 
focus. I think anything in your head, yeah. even if it's like a head cold, if you mm-hmm. don't, even if you don't feel rough, but you've got a full head, it's just the worst. It's, yeah. It just takes over your life. Like you say, you can't, focus. You can't think of anything else other than that. Yeah, exactly. So I had that all day, but I'm trying to pay attention, blah, blah, blah. After this meeting, completely forgot. They're like, oh, we've got this meal booked now. And I was like, oh, fuck, we're going for a meal. Shit. So I'm now sat with all these really important people eating dinner. And they're all so lovely. They made me feel so welcome. It was so nice. But my face is throbbing. Mm. And we're having a carvery. So I'm trying to eat this carvery with a face that is killing me. And obviously knocked it again. And it was just worse. Wednesday, I wake up. It's even worse. I'm like, fuck. In the end, I did half a day's work and I had to call it because it yeah. was that bad. I mean, I saw you Wednesday. It was that bad. Yeah, I saw you. You were stru- definitely, definitely struggling. Yeah. So I ring 111. They're like, right. Tomorrow, ring around all the dentists, just try to get an emergency appointment. That's all we can do. Right, okay. So I wake up Thursday. I'm like, right, wake well, wake up. Barely slept. But my throat's starting to hurt. My head's fucking hurting. I'm like, shit, I hope it's not an infection that's now taking over. <sighs> Managed to get You can it. die from that, you know? Oh, yeah. That's why I was shitting myself. Yeah. So I'm ringing around all these dentists. They're all going, uh, are you registered? I'm going, no. Well, we don't really take on. I'm like, I like, don't know what to do. 111 told me to ring you. I can't live with this pain anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I sounded like I was going to do something terrible. I wasn't. <laughs> but I was like, I can't live with this pain. Please, I haven't slept in fucking Please. 84 years. Me out of my misery. So I finally get in. I have the tooth ripped out. Oh, absolute gorgeous. But I, I bet it was instant relief. Was it was it instant release. But that little sore, that sore throat and that headache by that night was excruciating mm. so now i feel i'm in the full mist of either an infection or the flu so i'm having a tooth extraction with the flu imagine that fucker but that's why i'm not scared of dentists anymore because no matter what pain they put me in, no matter where they shoved that needle in my face didn't hurt as much as what was going on in in my body at the time wow so they took it out blah blah whatever i was like this is yeah whatever instantly it's great Tomorrow I wake up. He's like, don't worry about the infection. There's a small infection. I can see it on the thing, but there's nothing that needs antibiotics. You'll be fine. Wake up the next day. Can't swallow. Mm. The pain in my throat. I can't talk. Yeah. I can't cough because my fucking head is in pain. I can't open my eyes. So I'm trying to work in this new job because I can't call in sick. No, and I'm like, not oh. the first week. No, so I'm just trying to do a bit. I have a meeting with um, with someone and they say, dude, you look like shit. Call it. Because I'm just white as a ghost. Mm. I've got no colour in me at all. Like, just go to sleep. And then that was it. I was just bed bound for the next like four days. Every day a new symptom. Something wrong with me. Throat worse. Getting to the point where it was just closed. I couldn't eat. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, you saw me. I ate sweet corn chowder. Oh, man. Sweet corn chowder. At the end of all of this. Oh, God, just the thought of it makes me feel <laughs> sick. At the end of all of this, when I was like, it, the throat's still bad, but I'm able to at least move about and come to work. So like, this was on Monday. I had to eat sweet corn chowder because the only thing that work had that wasn't that wasn't solid. Was baby friendly. Oh, it was horrendous. And then it got to about three o'clock and I had to get someone to give me a can of Coke because I had zero nutrients in my yeah. body. <laughs> I was just about to need some out. sugar. So I was just like, oh my, I'm so sick of feeling ill. I mean, I'm still feeling a bit shitty now. But all of this happened. But Sunday morning, I woke up and I had my little on Sunday. So I'm like, I need to be okay. And I wasn't mm. okay. I couldn't really talk properly. I'm trying to whisper instead of talk because talking was painful. So I pick little and up and I'm like, uh, so I'm about to pick little and up. I go in the bathroom, uh, into the kitchen, sorry. I go to wash my hands or whatever, take some medication. I look outside. I notice that the rabbit's food is still there. Mm. Now that rabbit is a little is a little piggy pig, and yeah. he eats everything. So I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I go outside, just make sure he's all right. Dead. Rabbit's dead. <sighs> Shit. So I'm thinking, all I want to do is pick up my child, come back, and die on the sofa, <laughs> and let her do whatever she wants to do. But now I've got to have a chat with a six year old. And now the fucking <laughs> rabbit stolen your thunder and died and first. Died first, little fucker. So I'm like, oh, now I'm going to have to have that conversation with her. So I bring her back. I had to, walk, oh, I had to pick her up from the cinema and nip into town as well. So it's the worst. Mm. Bring her back here, sit her down, and I'm like, oh, right. And she's going, oh, I know you're not well, daddy. And she's been so sweet. She keeps, every time I cough, I'm in agony. Yeah. So she keeps like stroking my face and my hand. And she's like, Bless are you okay, her. daddy? And anyway, so I sit her down. <laughs> I sit her down to tell her a rabbit's dead. <laughs> Done that. Shit. Not an easy conversation at the best of times. And I don't word it that well. I'll be honest with you. Mm. Because I say to her, mm, you, you, you know, Ted. So our, our rabbit's called Teddy. Um, he has been quite sick as well. 
is what I say. <laughs> and he's died. And her face is like, <gasps> as well. <laughs> and I'm like, not like daddy. He didn't have the same with daddy. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It, it's something completely different. But, unfor- <laughs> but unfortunately, Teddy died. And she goes, oh. And as a cute, adorable six-year-old whose pet has just died, she just puts her head down. She buries it into my arms. And I just pull her close. And I went, are you okay, sweetheart? She just nodded her head. And she stayed quiet for two minutes. And then she went, Daddy, and she looked up at me with these beautiful blue eyes, and she went, I've not been here for five days, so can I have five of the chocolates out of that carpet calendar? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's what that rabbit's life's yeah. worth. <laughs> wow, poor Teddy, you got two minutes worth of sadness. Two minutes, but then I was like, well, at least she's not sad now. So I was like, cool, can I lay on the sofa and die for the next <laughs> while few you hours? Eat the next, while you eat the five you, chocolates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, that's been it, just sore throat, like death deathly yeah, awful. sore throat deathly headache it's been horrendous i feel like crap today but my friend it's a thousand times better than i've been mm. so yeah, no, no matter how much i feel dizzy or crappy or whatever it's sound i have no su- chip in my tooth anymore yeah oh yeah that's nice i can breathe and fucking swallow again i Big never win. have to eat sweet corn chowder again oh, let's fucking hope not oh my god so yeah <laughs> life is actually all right and i yeah, feel good. like death yeah <laughs> which yeah, is great good. so what i thought this episode could be it could be um poorly sam part two because uh, i actually re-listened to poorly sam episode and that was a banger of an episode <laughs> it was quite funny actually i was clear when was that what episode number well, was it weirdly enough uh, it's quite early on you know i think it's something like 16 or something like right. that but i was like oh i must have been around here you must have come to it no i was at your house we was getting pissed Oh, really? Yeah, so wow. I, like, I couldn't have been that sick. No. We had a live studio audience of Claire in the background. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I couldn't have been that bloody poorly. So I thought we could do poorly episode part two and just discuss some of the things that I've had to endure and watch whilst I've been sick, because what can you do? Yeah. It's just bounce in and out of consciousness and watch the telly box really yeah isn't it? So, i've been watching quite a lot of films as well recently have you? i've been back on a big big old film binge amazing so we'll go through a few of these and i think we'll probably the next couple of episodes we'll just go through what we've been watching catch up on because there's a lot that's come out and a lot that i want to discuss and there's you. a lot in the cinema as well mm, yeah and I, I haven't been to the cinema for a long long time but there's a, quite a quite a few things that i, I want to see so hopefully we can chat about them yeah, I definitely. mean, obviously we haven't seen them, but we can chat about what we want to see. Yeah, definitely. So uh, if you're happy with that, let's do it. Also, I just want to put an exclaimer out there. I've decided today, I decided that Ren, I only thought of this because part two and all of his songs are oh, in yeah. parts. Yeah. Ren is actually the greatest artist that to ever live. Talk, talk to me about it. Because right, I, I'm sorry, I, but he is. Because I've finally started listening to his album because yeah. I have this really weird thing. I don't, I really don't know why I, I do it. But I'll get right. I think it's because maybe I get obsessed with an artist, and like they've got an album coming out, and you know we obviously were obsessed earlier this year. Um, but I feel like I consumed all his music, and there was nothing else. So by the time his album actually came out, I was a bit like, I think subconsciously, I was like, oh, I'm kind of done with Ren at the moment, even though I've got all this music to now access. Mm-hmm. So it's taken me like, what well, his album came out, what about six weeks ago or something, something. like that. Yeah. So I've finally been listening to that. So, yeah, Ren. I'm just, obviously, new album is fantastic, but I'm just going through everything at the moment. Yeah. And because all I listen to is him, it is bouncing from his pure, like, rap grime stuff to um, his covers of, like, Hold On, um, Mm. to Violet's Tale, to the fucking Love Music songs, which are my favourite. Love Music Part 2 is my favourite Ren track. Right, it's, okay. The guy is a genius. Yeah, And every is. song I listen to, and how he, not only his lyrics, but the way that the music sits with it. So there's a bang, in Love Music Part 2, there's a banging part in it where he's talking about something, and he says, um, you're like Quantum of Solace. That film is seriously quite bollocks. Then... Um, his guitar playing turns into James Bond theme. Amazing. And then the whole next rap is just um, film name after film name of James Bond films. That's cool. It's fucking insane. Yeah. And every song is like that. And I've just, and you know, he's more um, uh, like Scar yep. um, type music as well. I genuinely just think from everything I'm listening to, because ev- every song you listen to is a different genre. Oh, yeah, that's it. The guy's the greatest musician oh, he's, he is ever, ever exist. He is incredible. His range is sensational. 
And I think for any artist that can do that, it works for them and against them a little bit. So, you know, when you're like, I was listening to the album, really enjoying it, but I feel like it's replayability in the sense of, you know, you want to listen to some music or you feel in a certain way, you stick on an album because you know it artist and the music's all very similar. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I want something that's going to be a bit heavier. You know, I'm at the gym or whatever. I want to get a bit, or I'm feeling a bit, it's a summer's day. Let's get some like poppier tunes on. Problem we're putting Ren on is each song's so different that it's like a di- whole different mood, a whole different feeling that I feel like it's really, it's hard to just go, oh, I'm sticking Ren on. Because you just go through so many emotions. Well, this is the thing with him now, because I'm so obviously into his music and it's all all I listen to at the minute is Ren, that depending on the mood I listen to depends on the songs that I pick. Yeah, yeah. So I will go, if I'm feeling upbeat, it'll be the love music songs, Humble is more Scar type stuff, um, Nighty Nighty, what yeah. I want. We could almost do with creating like mini playlists. That's basically for, what I do. For, like, yeah. for his music. So obviously he's still not... And he's got one early album, this first album. Is that Freckled Angels? Yeah. Yeah. And then like quite a few EPs and stuff, I think, and a lot of singles. Yeah. Um, but then he's also got the stuff that he did with The Big Push. They're fucking fantastic which, uh, as well. you know, basically a glorified cover band. Yeah, know? basically, um, yeah. Like they're just like buskers and they've got just released an album that early this year, didn't they? The Buskin mm-hmm. something, the Buskin album or whatever it's called. And it's just cover of quality songs. And that's... A, I suppose a bit more easy listening because you know all the songs, you can sing yeah. along to them anyway. So it's a bit more, I don't know, user friendly, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, of easy, mo- much more easy to consume. So yeah, I'm I'm back on the Ren Ren thing as well, and even just like rewatching like High Ren, which I've not watched for a quite probably a good six months or so because I, I like consumed it all, and I don't, I always, I'm wary of. I don't want to consume something to death where the point that I end, end up just not liking it. Yeah. But then rewatching that, you're like, this is just sensational. Like visually as well, what he's doing yeah. as well as the music, it's just the whole piece. Yeah. There's a new song on his new album called Money Game Part 3, Yeah, which is unreal. It's a, it's a piano piece um, about a guy's rise to fortune and fame yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and his fall. Um, have you seen the video to that? I've not watched it yet. Watch it. Because I, 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 I want was watch yeah i was watching the stuff the other day but then i was kind of distracted and i was like no this needs my full attention yeah yeah um, like, like the video is like as he's singing he, he does this really well as as he's singing there'll just be things small things in the background so he'll be walking through one typical warehouse yeah him in a suit but every character behind him and as he gets to a part of the song there will be a scene played out behind him right and i think yeah. childish gambino did it in this is america yeah. type stuff yeah 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 um but every character's wearing a white bag over the head. Oh, okay. And stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. God, the guy's a genius. And genuinely today, and I've never said this about another human being ever, the guy is the best in his field. Wow. It, honestly, I believe yeah. he is the greatest artist to live. He is incredible. And I would I was never into that type of music. No, it's not, not my no, normal go-to at all. Um, I just want him to come back to the UK and do some gigs and stuff oh, God, that's what we're all waiting to for see now that isn't boy it live. yeah i mean the fact that his album got to number one is insane in itself on his own push. on his own yeah no marketing no songs on the radio no touring nope literally just basically him from a hospital bed from like literally being hooked up to his what is stem cell stuff that he's getting done in, uh-huh. over in canada that's it's, it it's and an some album, music number videos one. yeah number one it's, it's madness isn't it's, it sensational so so impressive but it just goes to show that we're not the only ones feeling this way he's obviously he, i think he's tapping into a lot of people um especially the stuff around like things like high ren where it's about like the mental health struggles that uh-huh. that seems to be like an epidemic these days for most people who suffer with some sort of mental health or anxiety or depression mm-hmm. or whatever it might be so he's really tipping tapping into that generational thing as well so oh absolutely so Everyone can relate to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not even generational. Anyone that's suffering in that sort of way can relate to a lot of his music. It's just, it's different. It's different. It's new. It's exciting. It's not just regurgitated shit yeah. that a lot of this stuff <laughs> yes. is. It, it feels r- raw and it feels real. And I'm just excited for more stuff. Do you know he's got a Patreon? So I did, yes. Um, I've not looked into it. I knew he had one because I know he joined Twitch as well. He does a lot on Twitch. Does he? Yeah. yeah. So he 
there's a free version of his Patreon. You can sign up for free and you get like exclusive, like early access to stuff. But mm-hmm. I think there's one, it's like five, I think it's like only like five ninety nine a month or something like that, or five for a month. And I'm sure he's put like tutorials on there. Then you get oh, access wow. to tutorials, like guitar, let play in and singing <sighs> and stuff. And that, and it's good. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard, mate. So I, I don't know how that boy, I say this, most people can do it if you're good at an instrument, but how he plays what he plays oh, yeah. and sings at the same oh, time yeah, I know. is unreal because what his hands, body, fucking everything is doing is completely different to what's coming out of his mouth. It is ridiculous. Mm. Didn't want to talk about Ren today, so that came out of nowhere. No, I know. Did Ren make? Did you? Do you have Spotify? And did you have your Spotify wrapped? So no. So I don't Spotify for music. I have uh, a, I Amazon Music. Ah, uh, see. Do they do an equivalent of a wrap? They do not. Unfortunately, I wish they did. So the reason I went for Amazon Music was basically a friend of mine um, gave me. He had a family pass. He's right. like, I've got one, so you can have it. But then he got rid of it, so I got rid of it. I didn't have any music for a while, so I was like, right, I need to start paying for music again. I was going to obviously go for Spotify. It's what everyone uses. But when I looked into it, like Amazon Music had like 100,000 more songs than Spotify. Uh, okay. And it didn't really mean much to me, but I was like, well, that in itself is just selling sense. point. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah I, mean? I get that. So I went for that, and uh, yeah, just and everything in my house is Amazon as well. Yeah, fair. It, so. Yeah, I'll... I do like the the wrapped thing that did, they started doing. So did doing you get them. your wrapped? I got my wrapped. How, yeah. how was yours looking? Um, pretty pretty much what I expected. So I'll have a quick look. My top five artists, no Ren in there, but again, that's kind of not surprising because it was for a lot part most of the year there wasn't a whole host of songs to consume. Yeah, I don't think. Um, like, and this album came out quite late. But my top artist is a guy called Jeremy Soul. All right. Ever heard of him? No. He does the music for Skyrim. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, no, I have, because wasn't that on our friend Myers? It wasn't all of those Jeremy Soul stuff. Oh, it might have been. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure it I don't was. know. I've not seen her. I've not seen her rapped. So he's my top artist. That's mainly because I've got, I've got a fantasy playlist um that i created on spotify and it's a a huge chunk of that is the skyrim soundtrack Mm -hmm. because it's a massive soundtrack there's like three and a half four hours worth of content so i've got a lot of that in this fantasy playlist and because i do a lot of traveling or like if i'm you know if i'm doing work i put headphones in it's just background music so that's just that's why that's on my thing on my that was my number one similarly howard shaw Who's that does the Lord of the Rings soundtrack? Yeah, he came in at number three, but that's so that just goes to show that my actual that's kind of like background music. So in some ways, I kind of don't count that if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not it's not like me consuming new music. That's just literally I need something on in the background. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at number five, my boy Johnny Flynn. Yeah, boy. Number five, two years running. <laughs> so like whether he's got new music out or not, he's just like my constant. He just, that I, I just sits there. He's always he was always my go to. Number four, Ghost. Wow, really? Yeah. Didn't have you down as a Ghost fan. I got into them randomly. My, I think my mum and dad got me the vinyls. Not the, not the album that's just come out, the one before that, Prequel, um, or Prequel, however you say it. Um, and I absolutely loved it, smashed that. And then the new album came out, I think back end of last year, Im- Emperor. So I started listening to that this year and just smashed it. Absolutely loved it. Mm, that, that that's surprising to me. Really? Yeah, Ghost. I just I couldn't I couldn't envision you at a Ghost concert. Oh really? I, no, I would love it. Right. Yeah. Face paints next weekend. Oh, when I come I'd, round. I, I would do that. Let's Absolutely. get dressed up as Ghost. I, I would love to do that. <laughs> I, I think Ghost are now my number one artist that I want to see live. Amazing. Because okay. I've ticked off loads of people that are on my on my bucket list to see, but probably Ghost are the one that I think probably the most exciting band that I've not seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd like to do that. And it's nice to see, I know some people obviously don't like them because they're kind of pop metal, I would class them as. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's nice to see rock music still doing well because yeah. it's. I feel like it is dying out a lot at the moment. And uh, yeah, so the only one I've not said, number two, Post Malone, believe it or not. Amazing, which is weird, obviously, because you was quite open and said, oh, I don't really know much 
of Post Malone. No, absolutely until not. Until the Lord of the Rings yeah, Magic yeah. the Gathering came out that he bought the One Ring card yeah, for two million. Yeah, and we were getting exposed to him quite a bit because obviously we were in the magic scene. So he was suddenly popping up here, there and everywhere. And I was watching like, interviews with him and stuff. I was like, this guy's just one of us. He's just a nerd. <laughs> he loves all the same things we do. He just wants to sit, go home and play Skyrim. It's like... um. So then I just went on his musical journey and just literally I've listened to all of his albums Amazing. and smashed some of like a lot of them on repeat. So really I would in a lot of ways I'd class him as my number one yeah. musical artist, if that uh-huh. makes sense. So yeah, so that's pretty much my Although my top song was a Hosier song. I thought Hosier had been there, if I'm honest with you. I'm shocked that he, he wasn't, but his album came out again later on in the year and I and it doesn't count to the month of December and I've been smashing Hosier. So I do right. think Hosier would have been on that list. Um, yeah, but Francesca by Hosey was my number one song of the year. Amazing. Yeah. I just want to put this out there. Um, just a very quick comment. If anyone remembers Andrew WK, can you please comment <laughs> underneath the picture? Go on Facebook right now and just message us and tell me that you know who Andrew WK is. Because I mentioned it to um, Ryan earlier because he's married to Kat Dennings, the actress. And uh, I was absolute gobsmacked when i found out last night that kat dennings was married to andrew wk and ryan was like who the fuck is andrew wk never heard Bearing of him. in mind he grew up in the kerrang era yeah. with me that i was like how do you not know this guy and it turns out maybe nobody knows who andrew <laughs> wk is and i just assume he's bigger than he is so if you remember andrew wk please drop me a message because i need to know whether it's me going mental or he was huge. Yeah, no. It, it, I, you said it to me earlier. You're like, do you know Kat Dennings is married to? I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I mean, that could be absolutely anybody. Because I don't really yeah. know Kat Dennings to start with. Um, but yeah, and then you're like, Andrew WK. I was like, who, who the hell is he? Like, <laughs> tra- nev- literally never heard yeah, that Yeah, I was just before. so surprised. Because we've spoke about music kind of a bit recently over the last few episodes. And you always talk about the Kerrang era. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that was such like, in you know, like of the some 41 yeah type absolutely vibe. like skater rock yes, scene that's where he was he was the skater yeah rock, yeah yeah you know, hung out with the jackass boys type thing yeah so, like yes. cky and all that stuff wasn't it so, so there were a bit more perhaps a bit more underground than Maybe. obviously there were never there were, i don't think you'd ever, ever put him in the same leagues as like your green days or your blinks or your he, some 41 he had one song and then he brought out a second one that didn't do as good right yeah <laughs> so yeah, he, yeah. he wasn't huge <laughs> um <laughs> So how do you want to do this, mate? We're halfway through. We've got uh, just a few films and stuff I want to talk about. Um, Do you want to have a little snacky, snacky snoo now? Yeah, let's have a little snacky, snicky snoo snar. Fantastic. So um, speaking of music, our real number one. Yeah. Our real number one. Yeah. Drew Flanagan Music. Sing us in, baby. Here come Sam and Ryan, listen to them both speak. They've come through hours all with their pop culture critique. But are you even a nerd if you don't overread? So come on, everybody, it's the snack of the week. Good old Drew in his little singy chops. Yeah, he might be number one on my um, Spotify wrapped if he released more music for me to listen to. Yeah. Which apparently he is doing. Yay! I shared it recently onto our story. Is it next month it comes out? I believe so. The next EP. The next EP. Which is called... Oh, shit, I can't remember. It's such a banging name as well. Um, um, Only Revolutions. No, it's like... (laughs) I said that last time. Yeah, you did, 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 (laughs) yeah. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, it's coming. Don't worry, guys. It's coming. Right. So uh, you brought the strengths this week. No, not uh, yeah, but I was just the the courier. Oh, okay. So these are uh, these are gifted. They are gifted as just, just what we like for <laughs> our snacks of the week. These are from our good friend Thomas. Very good friend Thomas. He's a lovely man. He is a very lovely man. Um, and he recently went to Germany. Oh, why did he go there? Holiday. Okay, cool. I don't, right, see family. Cool. Family holiday. I was expecting you to say because he's German. Well, that too. That too, yeah, cool, yeah. All right, I don't know. He's a German. I don't know the ins and outs of his life, okay? <laughs> he's a German he's man. his own man. <laughs> he's a German man that went to Germany and brought back German sweets. So that's what we like. Yeah. Food from the motherland. Food from abroad. Yes. Um. So here they are. Cool. Talk, talk me through them. What are they? They look like... Boiled sweets. Okay. I can't... I've got a name on them. Um, Nim. Nim 2. Nim 2. 
Now, the problem with us having bold tweets, and I do apologise, Thomas, is we're just going to have to suck them for a little bit and spit them out. Because <laughs> we've got a second one to try as well. Yeah, we've got different flavours, because there's, there's a yellow and an orange. I'm going to guess orange and lemon flavoured. I'll tell you what, you go orange, I'll go lemon. All right. There you go. That's, that, that, and then, that's... then we can enjoy the whole sweet. Yeah, that's that's smart. Now, what's your thoughts on a boiled sweet generally? Um, I mean, boiled sweets normally are quite boring, aren't they? Mm. Obviously, with my with my teeth, I don't particularly like hard things in my mouth. Yeah. There's <laughs> um, no sweet corn chowder, is it? There's no sweet corn chowder. But I'll be honest with you, when I saw these, I thought, I wonder how different a boiled sweet from Germany could be. So we're about to find out. Ryan, how is a boiled orange sweet from Germany? Um, yeah, it's pretty standard. It's just orange a, flavored boiled sweet. Yep, yeah, this is a sherbet lemon. Gonna get this? Wow, <laughs> I'm not chewing through this. No, I don't like to chew boiled sweet. No. I feel like I have sensitive teeth as well. Are you, a, are you a bold sweet fan? No, I don't, I don't really have any sweets. Oh, yeah. The most sweets I have are snack of the week. Mm. But I mean, after the snack of the week comes, it's a, it's a good middle tier. Mm. Middle tier, not oh, yeah. offensive. That, it's Un, a, unoffensive is mm-hmm. the right word I would use. It's a nice boiled sweet in your mouth. Yeah. A lemony sweet. Now, what would have been perfect here was I bought us some drinks for snack of the week. Mm. So this would have been perfect to have a boiled sweetened drink. And I looked in the cupboard, and there's only one left. So I I bought six of them, so I must have drank five of them. Mm. They were Fanta ones. You know the ones with the question mark on you got to guess the yeah. flavour? Yeah. It was them. Ah. I thought we could guess together. Yeah. But instead, I drank most of them, so yeah, we can't do that. So, uh, so we'll just keep sucking these. Mm-hmm. Which will keep us nice and moist in our mouth. Mm. Still sucking. Take a long time to suck some water, so it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, <okay. laughs> it's now Thursday. <laughs> Although mine has now disintegrated, mm. and it's very gooey in the middle. Mine's starting to break apart. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 That's a nice gooey scent of that, Thomas. Them Germans have it right. Top tier gooey scent. Mm. Cool. <laughs> done there we go yeah. the sweet's gone all sucked up Happy how was days. the um the chewiness at the end for your yeah. for your teeth well i'll be honest it was all right but it went on <laughs> yeah, yeah. it did go on a while mm. i was like oh that's a nice soft center it's about done now to, and took then a while uh, to chew through the soft center actually yeah so happy friday we've missed two days of work now <laughs> <laughs> thomas thank you for the ball sweets thank you very much thomas please you know please bring us more back from uh germany next time you go Next time, I want a pastry from Germany. Do the Germans do pastries? I don't know. I assume so. Everywhere does pastries, mate. Surely Germany has some pastry that is special to, to them. German, Surely. Germany. Thomas, let us know. Tell, tell us what it is and then buy us it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Should we get into talking about a little bit of something, something we've been watching? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I'll start with the first thing I watched when I first started getting poorly. Mm. This was... Um, it's fucking everywhere, so it wasn't really given to me by anyone. But our good friend Max, who's been on several episodes, came to me and said, are you watching Squid Games The Challenge? It is fucking banging. Ah, yeah, I have seen it advertised. And I was like, you know what? I'm not that bothered. Like, I'm not massive into like challenge game show type stuff. Mm. Um, love Squid Game, don't get me wrong. But it's been a while since I've seen it, so the hype is well and truly gone for me. Yeah. Like, you know, when Squid Game Season 2 comes out, I'll be excited. Mm-hmm. Fuck me, mate, this show. This show is good. Wow. Don't get me wrong, when you're watching it, 
there's a lot, you know, because there's a lot of the whole, oh my God, we're all making friends with each other and we're all starting queues. Like, you know, there's there's the Gambu gang and stuff like that. And, right, okay. And they're like, oh, we're all friends, but at the end we're going to have to fuck each other over. And there's, so a lot of it's written. You can yeah, tell a like lot of it's written. scripted or whatever. Yeah, which is fine. Um, but there's just some amazing people in there. There's just people from all walks of life. Right, okay. You know, there's... Um, is it in like the contestants like international all over the world okay so it's not like a south korean because it is south korea isn't it that's good yeah so, it? So, so there are some south korean contenders yeah and um, there's some american there's a, there's a couple of scousers in there right couple of okay. irish guys a couple of scottish guys like it, it's just good right okay what i really like about it is they keep they keep quite true to the original tv show so obviously um red light green light at the beginning um yep. the whole instead of them getting shot, it's just an ink pack on their chest and stuff. And when you're watching these ink packs go off when they die, you can tell it makes every single one of them jump. Right, okay. Like, like oh, fucking hell. Yeah. And then they have to pretend to die. So that's quite funny. Yeah. But then there's stuff like, there's this massive setup to the episode where they're going to do tug of war. So all the big boys are getting together and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to start a gang. And then they're all fucked when it comes to tug of war. There's this whole episode around that and everyone really worrying and people trying to get into that group but mm-hmm. others being like we need to use our brains to outsmart them and you're like oh, yeah. okay so how are they going to do this yeah and they finally get to it and it's battleships <laughs> it's not even <laughs> <a tour of war. laughs> so, stuff like, so, cool. so they keep quite true to it but just as i think there's 10 episodes but just as a bang on in the background characters are brilliant it really brings back that urge to want, want to watch squid game right you yeah. forget how fucking good Squid that was Game a great is. show. The most streamed show of all time, isn't it? Absolutely, or, or Netflix yeah. show anyway. Yeah. So it's um t- it took over the world. It was insanely big. Yeah. Massive. So um recommendation from me, like I say, when Max recommended it to me, it's not a recommendation because it is literally everywhere. I think it is still number one on Netflix at the moment. Yeah, it, I think is, it is just a brilliant watch. That's cool. You I'll know, have to watch it because, like, I agree. I'm the same as you, as in, I don't really like game show stuff or things like that. But then I watched, as the listeners all well know, I talked about the physical 100, physical 100 which yeah. again was South Korean thing, you know, uh, contestants about the, the trying to find the best body, the ultimate body, you know, the fittest person. And I love that. That was great. And then in a lot of ways, that was very similar to to Squid Game. You know, it was like, start off with, what, 100 contestants and you slowly get whittled down to whoever's going to be the the best one over a series of challenges. So that's probably changed my opinion of this Squid Game show because, again... I don't think I'd be the same as you. I probably wouldn't have been that fussed. Yeah, I don't but, know. It's just one of those, if I'm going to be sat at home watching something, I don't feel I get what I want from viewing from a, a challenge yeah. show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what For you mean. For me, I want, I mean, and I say that sometimes I just want, I want Family Guy. Other yeah, times I yeah, want yeah, a film. Yeah. Other times I want anime, you know, but I never want a challenge show. No, a I'm the same show. as you. I just don't I'm, want I'm, that I'm because. The same. Okay, someone's going to win money. Yeah. Do, am I going to win money? No. The closest thing I'll ever get to with something like that is Taskmaster. Love Taskmaster because that, again, fair. because it's it's not serious though. Comedy, it's yeah. comedy. You got comedians on there and actors, and it's just it's just light hearted entertainment. Isn't yeah, it? of course. Yeah, and the prices are ridiculous. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was just a small recommendation. That's what I started watching when I was poorly. I started watching that in the hotel room. Nice. Um, and that just kind of carried on into being unwell, um, banging it on, turning it off, falling asleep, having to go back. And by the end of it, like you're really rooting for certain players. Yeah, and of course. Yeah. When they go, you're like, and that's the one thing that you do forget about a um, quiz show is unlike a TV show, when you're rooting for a character, because they're really big, they normally either survive or they go out in a blaze of glory in this. There's so many contestants, contestants, sorry, that you like a few of them. Yeah. And then, of course, most of them are going to get axed. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. like 456 players yeah, It's exactly the same when I was watching the Physical 100. Yeah. You get attached to certain people, you're like really rooting for them, and say, like, oh, no, yeah, you just eliminated. See you later, never to be seen again. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, oh, so uh, who, oh. who am I going to like next? Yeah, that's it. And that's it, you're just and looking suddenly, for the next one to not, like. Yeah, that's the worry, isn't it? Because suddenly, if all your favourites go, you're like, oh, I'm not bothered about the rest of you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So the next one was a... It was a bit of a rogue choice, really, because with how unwell I was feeling, what I needed was nonsense telly. Yeah. So I'm not going to go into it, but I watched a lot of Big Mouth, which is something that um, I never got into the first time around. Mm-hmm, I've not watched it. Um, 
it's funny. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's very graphic. You know, it, it's about, obviously it's about puberty. So there's a lot of like full frontal animation, nudity, pictures of fucking 12 year olds, which is weird in itself. Yeah, that like, is odd. Yeah, you know, like talking vaginas and shit. But actually right, okay. the comedy in it is yeah, quite yeah, good. Yeah. Um, that's what I watched a lot of like in and out of sleep. But this next one was quite a serious film um, that I couldn't not watch because of the cast. And it was a dangerous choice to watch it when I was ill because you need the attention for this. So I watched Leave the World Behind. Is this the one with Julia Roberts in? Yes. Ah, yeah. I see. I never heard of this before, but Claire and I watched the Graham Norton show at the weekend. Okay. And what are your thoughts on the Graham Norton show? Would you ever watch it? You know, I never watched the Graham Norton show, but I watch all the clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love the clips. Yeah, that's probably the one talk show I, that I will watch. I'll happily watch. And the ca- the, the guests he gets are insane. Oh, big. Like, top, top tier. Yeah. So for this this week, it was um, Timothy Chalamet, obviously, about with Wonka. Of course. Tom Hanks was Cher. on there. Cher. Shit. And Julia Roberts. It's madness, isn't with it? With the four guests just all sat chatting. And it's so weird because then you're suddenly watching people like Timothy Chalamet, who's obviously the hot shit right now, and like he's he's probably in a lot of ways maybe the biggest out of the four right now. Right now, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You know, up and coming and whatever. But he, you know, so interesting to see him as like a starstruck, basically lad who's just like, oh my god, I'm sat next to Tom Hanks and Cher and Julia Roberts. Like, it's so cool. I like the dynamic. Yeah, because he's, yeah. he's just a kid at the end of the day, isn't he? Still? Yeah, he's, I don't know what. He's about 26 or something now. Fucking a lot younger than us, mate. True. <laughs> he's doing well. That boy. He's doing very, yeah. very, very well. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah. anyway, Julia Roberts was on there promoting this film and they showed a clip from it. Looked fucking good. It looked intense. Yeah, so I didn't really know what it was about at and, all when yeah, I put it Yeah, it doesn't on. give anything away. Like even Graham Norton was like, I'm not going to say a single thing about this film. Just go watch it. Yeah. So what brought me to it was, uh, it was kind of like, I don't know, like a drama thriller, um, but... Now, I'm not a massive Julia Roberts fan, so it's not Julia yeah, Roberts okay, that, would, that would pull me to a film. But Mahershala Ali, yeah. who is a pull to anything for me. He's I just great. think he is outstanding. Ethan Hawke. I fucking oh, I'm love a massive Ethan Hawke fan. fan, yeah. Um, so he was in it. Um, right, so... Uh, my ha- Mihala? My Hala, yeah. My Hala. My, my Hala. So I've not come across her for fantastic in this, but then it was also like also starring Kevin Bacon. So I was like, nice. well, let's go. So it's directed by uh, Sam Esmail, who did like Mr. Robot and Homecoming. Ah, uh, right, stuff. yeah, yeah. Um, trying to give a premise of the film. So the premise of the film is Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke go away with the family to this nice little Airbnb, lovely, beautiful house, um, gorgeous um, swim pool outside. Late one night, knock on the door. Mahershala Ali and um, his daughter are stood at the door and they're like, oh, look, we're really sorry. This is our house and we're sorry to bother you, but there's a power cut in the city and we need to be somewhere safe. Mm-hmm. And we just thought we'd come out here. Can you help us? And then there's this big, like, who can you trust yeah, type okay. vibe going on. And Julia Roberts is very do not trust these people. How the fuck do we know them? And, you know, it's shot in such a way that do we trust them? What is a bit weird? You know, mm. there's this high-end booze cabinet right. that is sort of shown to us quite early on. And Mahershala uh, Ali's like, oh, I'll, um, his name's George in it. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll get us a drink to show that I live here. And he gets the keys out for this this uh, cabinet and he can't find the key to unlock it. Yeah. So he's yeah. like, oh, I knew the wife told me to bloody label these keys. And you're like, oh, is he, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. But Ethan Hawke's very much like, oh, we can't let him go. You know, it's dark. It's this, that, and the other. Um, and then the film just takes a massive twist and it's like an apocalyptic film. Right. And I'm not going any more into okay. it than that because yeah. how it is done is fucking crazy. Okay. It really gets you thinking. Now, the cast, outstanding. Mm -hmm. Out fucking standing. Kevin Bacon, very small part in it, but outstanding. Kevin Bacon. Ethan Hawke's great in it. Just plays this like, oh, you know, whatever kind of guy. Um, Mahershala Ali, like, is just incredible in anything he fucking Mm -hmm. touches, isn't he? Julia Roberts, her character arc is really good in this. Okay. Very good in this. Um, 
but the whole thing just leaves you guessing. Right. Okay. You have no fucking idea what's going on. Yeah. The like... whole film. They have no idea what's going on. You have no idea what's going on. Now, the one thing that this film is giving us that is a massive talking point at the minute is the ending. Okay. Which I'm obviously not going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go into. The way it ended, I was very much like, question mark? What the fuck? Yeah. Was that? But again, it's a thinker. Right. Take a minute, sit back. Why did it end that way? Yeah. Because you can tell a lot of people, I mean, it's been all over the internet that people are slagging off the ending to this film, but these are people that the film ends and go straight online and slag it off. Yeah. Instead yeah. of taking a minute to what could this mean? Okay. That's interesting. Do you interesting. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to the point that the writer, so this is a book originally, um, excuse me, the author of the book has come out and been like, well, this is kind of why it is that way. This is why I wrote it. Like, not telling people what to think or, well, kind of explaining or what it the is. rationale but, behind it. Yeah, the I rationale think, yeah. of why it was written that way. Mm-hmm. Take from it what you want, but this is why it was written that way. Um, I feel it's a weird one because after sort of seeing these um, news clips of people being like, oh, people are fucking losing their shit over the ending and saying how bad it is, I then read the comments to this stuff and it's basically just a 50 50 of people being like this film is the biggest waste of two and a half hours of my life it's dog shit and then people on that going you're a fucking idiot yeah. <laughs> no you're a fucking idiot no yeah. you're a fucking yeah. idiot standard and, uh, yeah literally standard internet debate d- standard in that debate of just idiots calling idiots idiots yeah. <laughs> it's fucking mental um massive massive recommendation on my behalf again two and a half hours long um so pretty long film but incredible acting, yeah. incredible office hit storyline. Mm. And what I will say was, and this was actually why I wanted to bring these out how I did, was um, what I watched and the fever dreams that I had after watching them. Right. So Squid Game, the challenge, yeah. that gave me, a fever, uh, gave me a fever dream of... So people that don't know what a fever dream is, if you've never had one, it's basically you are it's an it's an awake dream mm. like you believe this shit's going on yeah, but you know it it's not absolutely it, mad and all yeah, sort yeah, of like exactly. hallucinogenic almost exactly so um the squid game one I, the fever dream was i was in a box and i had to get out of it and there was people around me in boxes and they had to try to get out of it and then we we're all having to try work together to get out of these like puzzles yeah and that was a fever dream i got from that from this one, I genuinely convinced myself that I was ill because we was in a bio war at the minute. Someone was attacking wow. us, uh, and I believed that I was just patient zero yeah. for that. Bloody hell. I fully <laughs> convinced myself of this um, because of this film. So yeah, I remember now, fucking well annoyed I forgot that. I wrote these in order yeah. of because of the fever dreams I had. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this film fully made me believe in my feverish state at that night that was in some sort of bioterrorist war. That's insane. And I was, I was like, but I know, been so intense. I know about five people that are sick at the minute. So this is 100% what it is. What could it be? How am I going to get better from it? And how are we going to fight this? Like, cause in a fever dream as well, you don't panic, do you? You just got to go in with it, you aren't go, you? You go with it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I had that to con- Wow. With one night which was off its fucking that sounds nuts. intense that sounds intense i mean i had a intense dream last night jurassic park-esque and i was getting fucking chased by t-rexes it was fucking terrifying but oh god i don't even know where that came from because i've not you watched... went out running a t-rex either are you no no you Spe- did though speaking of um t-rexes mm-hmm. and jurassic park have you seen they've announced a new jurassic park game i have not no it's called Jurassic Park Survival, I think, and it's literally like an officially licensed Jurassic Park survival game wow. where it follows the, the story of the film, the first one, but I, from what I can get, gather, this is just like from the trailer I've seen. I don't know if it's like the initial launch trailer. You look like you play a scientist that gets left behind. She's like, I'm still stranded on the island. And obviously going through all the same places that they go to in the film... And then you've just got to survive. I it give it's giving me. I don't know any details about it, but it's giving me alien isolation vibes. You know where you're just a survivor. You can't fight because you you can't kill a T Rex or whatever. You've just got to hide and survive. And it could be got the potential to be incredible. You should yeah. watch the trailer. The graphics look unbelievable. I know it's like the the relaunch trailer. It's like the cinematic trailer, but still amazing. That's, that's that's one thing to look out for for us. I will look for that. Um, I know that you've watched a couple of films because there's only really one other thing that I want to mention. Uh, so do you want to talk me through the the couple of films that you've watched recently? 
Yeah, sure. So I, I don't know if you can remember me saying earlier in the year, but I've been on a, I was on a big um, old school Japanese film binge. Mm, I was yeah, on yeah, doing yeah. it earlier in the year. So I'm back on that train recently. So mainly um, Akira Kurosawa films. So for those that don't know, Akira Kurosawa is a Japanese director um, that was made famous in like the 40s, 50s and 60s and is basically considered one of the greatest directors, if not the greatest director of all time. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, sort of like the father of modern cinema in a lot, in a hell of a lot of ways, you know, did things like Seven Samurai and like lots of classics that have been ripped off time and time again. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those, you watch these films and you're like, oh my God, this is just like, that's a more modern film that I've seen before. And like, there's not many of his films that aren't ripped off. Yeah. And a lot of the ones that I'd watched earlier in the year, like his really famous ones, like Seven Samurai and Yanj- uh, Sanjuro and Yojimbo and Rashomon, they're all sort of like period pieces. So set during the Edo period. So basically like feudal Japan. So it's like samurai and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This time I'll watch some of his more like um, post-World War II films set in like post-World War Tokyo. So like one of them was like a noir thriller. Oh, which wow. was Mitten, and it was basically a, it's called Stray Dog, and the main character is a rookie cop, and he's on a busy bus, and he gets his pistol pickpocketed. And then it's, the whole film is him trying to track down the pistol, but it's used in, like, murders, and he's always, like, one step behind, and he's, like, distraught because, like... That sounds insane. Like, his pistol's being used to kill people and been loaned out, and he's, like, one step behind, and he feels responsible because it's his... He teams up with, like, the old experienced... Uh, policeman but it's all set in like post-war tokyo so it's all dark and grim and poor and and it's just like i was watching that film and genuinely with a lot of old films i find like okay it's good i can see why it's like critically acclaimed or whatever but it's kind of boring yeah yeah, like it doesn't hold up well i was hooked on this film it fucking it hooked me it sounds insane 1948 it came out wow so it's a 75-year-old film, and I was hooked on it. I was like, it's so cool, like a great story, and it still holds up really well today. Um, so that was cool. I watched another one as well. That probably I think it's the oldest film I've watched this year, which was Drunken Angel. Um, so again, another Kira Kurosawa film, and the same two leads. So if, what you find with his his films are, just like someone like Tim Burton always has the same cast. Of course. So yeah, he has yeah. his, his main guy, sort of Toshiro Mifune, who's an icon of Japanese cinema. So I'm discovering all this, like, it was really cool to discover all this world. So this guy is, like, basically one of the early action heroes. Like, he's in Seven Samurai. He's the rookie cop that gets his gun stolen. And he became a legend along with Kurosawa. And then eventually they, they made, like, 16 films together. But then, like, they always tend to do. I had a big fallout and never reconciled and stuff. But I watched a documentary on him recently, Toshiro Mifune. And, you know, it's all people talking about how incredible he was and how he's one of the greatest actors of all time. Because he is, he's incredible. You watch him and you think, this is a, these characters are amazing. I'm hooked to this guy. He's charismatic. He's, none of his characters, apart from perhaps these early ones, they're not one-dimensional. They're interesting and unique. And he reminds me of like almost like, you know, like how Jack Nicholson or someone like that, they yeah, just, yeah, yeah. they'd pull you in no matter what the character is. He's the same. And this documentary is insane. I had like Steven Spielberg on there, Martin Scorsese on there, all talking about how incredible Toshiro Mifune was. Amazing. So I'm going on this proper journey with them. So yeah, I watched another one, which was um, Drunken Angel. So again, that was post-war Tokyo. And it was about this drunken doctor who's working in like the slums and he ends up trying to look after a yakuza guy who's got tuberculosis and they form like an uneasy relationship and he's trying to look after him and you know it's quite toxic and but that was quite a, that was dark it was like a dark film with a really fucking depressing ending and i was like again one of them were like this is a film came out in 1947 the oldest film i've watched this year yeah and like, yeah and it still stuck with me and i was like that's a testament of a great film oh god absolutely yeah um, so I've been, yeah, smashing them. The only other one I think I've watched recently was, again, those two. It was one called The Hidden Fortress. And it's a bit more of a lighthearted film. So again, it's set during like like the Edo period. So it's about a samurai. And let me, so it came out in like, I think 1957 or 58. I'll explain the premise and let me see if you sound, if it sounds familiar to 
any films you might have listened to. Go for it. It starts off... Jaws. <laughs> yes! <laughs> no, it's not Jaws. It starts off... Two peasants are mm-hmm. walking through what looks like a barren wasteland. They're all tattered and they're all trying to escape from this war-torn area because it turns out there's two rival gang, two not gangs, two rival war like kingdoms fighting each other and they're trying to escape the war. Okay. So these two peasants, you know, barren wasteland, it's all rocky and dusty and um, eventually they stumble across this one guy who comes out of like the hills and he's quite mysterious and you know doesn't see everything he doesn't seem i don't know not all it appears as what he seems anyway they stumble across this hidden fortress which is hidden in the mountains within the mountains there is a missing princess who the enemy are looking for turns out this guy this that that was with the peasants and is now with the princess is this old wise general who's a samurai and he's powerful and he him with tries to help the princess escape into another land and the peasants these two peasants are just caught up in it all at one point there's a big showdown between the samurai and another legendary samurai surrounded by that samurai's warriors as they all look on as these two have a epic sword duel does it sound familiar at all super mario no <laughs> no go on basically this this film has was a huge influence on a mr george lucas who created star wars well it's weird because when you're saying that i was like it sounds exactly like star wars but if i say star wars you're gonna shoot me down nope. Fuck. He literally okay, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, this is one of my biggest inspirations for Star Wars. Amazing. So those two peasants, when you're watching them, you're like, they are literally R2-D2 and R2, C-3PO. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. the idea that two minor characters get caught up in this epic conflict with generals and princesses and all these insanely powerful people, and they're just like caught in the middle of it. Yeah. This like war-torn thing. The princess storyline is, okay, is very separate, but the early basings of star wars apparently was massively ripping off the hidden fortress the script changed a lot and it it developed a lot but the old general samurai general is literally obi-wan kenobi Mm -hmm. the fight where he's literally fighting off against another samurai um might as well be obi-wan versus darth vader with surrounded by all the guys that might as well be dressed as stormtroopers yeah certain scenes like this is just fucking star wars that is insane and tashira mifune who plays um the general, uh-huh. like I said, he's, he's sort of the lead in most of Akira Kurosawa films. Apparently, I've read that George Lucas actually offered him the part of Obi-Wan Kenobi. No way. But he turned it down. That is insane. So that is what I mean by these films. They are literally the inspiration for modern films. Like obviously, Seven Samurai is literally been repeated so many times. Magnificent Seven, whatever. Yojimbo and Sanjuro is a character that is literally Clint Eastwood in F- Fists Full of Dollars and for a few dollars more. Mm-hmm. S- very similar storyline. So it's been incredible. To, I feel like I'm untapped into, like, um, tapping into a, um, like, a, such a rich vein of film lore and, like, oh, legendary massive. films. And I would definitely recommend them. I've got a subscription to the BFI player, so yeah, British yeah, yeah. Film Institute. I got it through Prime. So all these films are on there. So. It, yeah, it's been really, really cool. I've really enjoyed that this year. So it was nice to get back on that. There's still quite a lot that I want to watch, but just watching it and you're like, oh my God. And then when you've seen people like Spielberg and Scorsese and George Lucas come out and say like, yeah, Akira Kurosawa, Toshiro Mifune, these guys are the reason I uh, we've made our films. It's insane. That is insane. Because cause you think about it, don't you? And like Japanese film, yeah. I, I suppose a lot of people just kind of look at anime or in a lot of ways now because because we we look at modern yeah so you, people think anime people think maybe horror sometimes gore yeah this is where it's gonna yeah, go next, like, you know you know and and actually that's not it like that's most, not its foundation no, at all most like, of western film comes from that in a, yeah in a lot of ways absolutely I, I absolutely lost myself listening to you talk yeah <laughs> like, this sounds it's some of them films sound incredible yeah they are fantastic uh, yeah. and there's, there's a lot more that i want to watch as well i'd like to eventually watch all of akira kurosawa's films i think he did like 33 over his career Amazing. for his lifetime right up until the 80s mid 80s who's still bringing out critically acclaimed films so 
Yeah, it's been an incredible journey this year. I I, I, I can't wait till we do our end of year roundup and I'll oh, see God, how yeah, many yeah. of these films I've actually watched because that's been a big theme of mine this year. Only a few more weeks until that as well. I know. Until we not, do the big, big roundup. Not long. See if we actually all manage to get to our 52 episodes. 52 yeah. episodes, 52 films. Films. Yeah. Um, we are about at an hour, so are you happy to wrap up there? Leave it there? Absolutely. Because there is just one last thing, and it's not really the best thing to end on. No, it's sad. Um, it's some very sad news. So today, this morning, the first thing I saw when I opened my eyes, I, I the alarm went off, I opened my phone to turn the alarm off. Um, Facebook was still open from last night, so it reloaded, and the first thing I saw was that Andre Brower had died. Um, yeah, if you don't know who Andre Brower is, he played Captain Raymond Holt in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Um, absolute fucking legend of a man. Yeah, sixty one years of age. So young, so young. There's no cause of death been announced yet, is there? I don't just, think. just said short illness. Right. Um, the internet is flooded. I'm not with surprised. Such amazing words for the man. It, it, it's a big loss. It is a big loss, and I feel like Brooklyn Nine Nine has been one of those the shows that everyone knows, like even if you don't watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, you know the characters from it because it's so big. You've seen clips from it. And Captain Holt is probably the best character in the show. He's By dry, far. sense of humor, is serious. Like, the, way, the way he delivers every single line. His character it, arc is the best character arc yeah. for the whole of Brooklyn Nine-Nine as well. An absolute legend. And one of the greatest characters of all time. And played so well yeah. you can't imagine a different Captain oh that's Raymond what I mean Holt. and that's all down to Andre doing that um, yeah I was shocked I literally I only discovered it I'd have clearly been living in a bubble since this morning just been busy and not I'd literally not checked the outside world so the first thing I did was I went on my phone and when I got to yours literally just before we started recording I was like oh my god yeah because Andre before you got in, yeah. me and Josh was sat watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine yeah well, I saw you have Brooklyn Nine-Nine on as I pulled up so yeah yeah, very, very sad. So big, big loss, that. Big loss. Massive rest in peace. Um, so if you're not going to watch any of the recommendations we've given you today, please go watch a couple of episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. Make yourself laugh. Pay some respect to the man himself because he's fucking absolute legend. Absolutely. Uh, you are going to sign us off with your standard words of wisdom, though, Ryan, so please go for it. Oh, oh shit. I'm not pre- not prepared. Even less so <laughs> like, than normal. Like you normally do. Um... um Um, boiled sweets are nice peace